Good evening and welcome to the 2021 NCAA Division I Men's Tennis Selection Show. I'm your host, Matt Schumacher. 64 teams continue the journey to a national championship today with the road to Orlando beginning this weekend. First round action starts May 7th at 16 different host sites with the winner of each advancing to Orlando for a chance to win a national title. And with the cancellation of the 2020 NCAA tournament due to COVID-19, this year's competition may be the most highly anticipated in history. Who's in? Who's hosting? What are the matchups? Let's find out right now as we dive into the bracket and unveil the top overall seed in the tournament, Florida. The Gators went undefeated in SEC play, 20-2 overall, winning their second regular season title in three years. Florida head coach Brian Shelton was named SEC Coach of the Year last week, and he hopes to guide his club back to Orlando, where they lost in the Elite Eight in 2019. The Gators open up with Sun Belt champ South Alabama, while Duke and South Florida earn at-large bids to earn a trip to Gainesville. The next four-team pod starts with a return to the NCAA tournament for the third time in as many tries for Notre Dame. The Fighting Irish open up with Mid-American champion Western Michigan, who went a ridiculous 22-1 during the 2021 campaign. DePaul earns an automatic bid from the Big East Conference after winning its first tournament title in program history. Congrats, DePaul. They will battle the 16th seed and host of this pod, Illinois, who just won the Big Ten Tournament Championship after going 21-2 during the regular season. The Illini are looking to make a run this year after losing in the second round to Cal back in 2019. To another seeded team and host, UCF checks in at number nine on the, ni on the line. The Knights have won 13 straight matches, including the AAC Tournament Championship with a sweep of South Florida. Monmouth is their opponent in the opening round, fresh off a fifth consecutive MAAC title. Welcome back to the dance, fellas. Meanwhile, Miami earns an at-large bid out of the ACC, and they will face the Bulldogs of Mississippi State from the SEC. The Bulldogs made a run to the Sweet 16 in 2019, looking to get back there again here in 2021. Rounding out the first quarter of the bracket, we start with Oklahoma battling Summit League champion Denver. This is the first tournament title for the Pios since 2017. They're back in the dance. Meanwhile, New Mexico, welcome back to the tournament after Raul Dobai became the first men's tennis player in 18 seasons to earn both Mountain West Player of the Year and Newcomer of the Year honors. The Mountain West champs will square off against the eight-seeded Texas A&M Aggies. Valentin Vachero earned the program's first SEC Player of the Year honor this year. He also ranked top five in the country in singles all season and finishes his career at Texas A&M with an astonishing 43-6 record in SEC play. The next host site belongs to the fifth seeded Virginia Cavaliers. The four-time national champs are coming off their 13th ACC tournament championship. Carl Soderlund and Andreas Pedrosa earned back-to-back -back ACC player and coach of the year honors respectively this year. What a season it was for Virginia. Another ACC championship. Well, another champion, NEC champ, Fairly Dickinson will take on Virginia in the first round. Meanwhile, LSU is back in the big dance for the first time since 2017. Man, the Tigers feeling good about their 2021 campaign. They went 500 in a tough conference. They'll serve it up against Stanford, who also earns an at-large bid from the Pac-12. And no team has won more titles in the modern era than the Cardinal, who boasts 15 national championships. Pepperdine returns to the tournament after winning its first WCC tournament title since 2013, where six Pete Big West champ UC Santa Barbara awaits in the opener. Grand Canyon also won its way in via the WAC tournament, sending them to the host of this four team site, Southern Cal. Fresh off their fifth Pac 12 championship, 
This is the second tournament championship in as many seasons for USC, and it's a program that has produced 15 singles national championships. And they might just do it again this year with Daniel Kukirman playing very well for the Trojans. The 13 seed belongs to South Carolina which hosts our next site for the first and second round. This is a strong club, folks, boasting two conference first-teamers and Daniel Rodriguez and Connor Thompson. Together, they are ranked the 11th doubles pairing in the country, while Rodriguez checks in at number two in the country in singles after going 10-3 and three against ranked opponents this year. They are a fantastic dynamic duo as a doubles team and figure to make a run at a national championship. But they'll have to host UNC Wilmington in the first round. And later in the bracket, Liberty joins this pod after earning an automatic bid from the Atlantic Sun. They'll take on NC State, who is back for their third straight trip to the NCAA tournament. The last four teams on this half of the bracket start with another at-large bid. This one for UCLA. And the Bruins will face Northwestern in their opening round matchup. Meanwhile, Northern Arizona is dancing for the second straight time after waiting 40 years for its first trip to the national tournament. The final host on this side of the bracket is four-seeded Texas, who will take on Northern Arizona. The Longhorns are back in the dance after falling to Baylor in the Big 12 tournament despite winning the championship nationally in 2019. They are looking to get back to another national semifinal in Orlando. All right, we're halfway through the bracket with 32 teams still to unveil. We'll get right back to the bracket right after this quick break. For the win! If a champion can teach us anything, it's to stay hungry, to keep our resolve, and to prepare for what's next. So to the players in the college sports community who never stop believing, the end goal is in sight. The ultimate rally, a comeback for all ages. For the fans, the teams, and most importantly, the players. Let's bring on the next champion. We're ready. Welcome back to the NCAA Division I Men's Tennis Selection Show. Florida is the top overall seed. Several at-large spots have been claimed. Let's hop right back into the bracket, and we start with the number three overall seed, Tennessee. The Vols are coming off their first SEC tournament title since 2010, thanks in large part to the SEC Freshman of the Year, Johannes Monday, and senior All-SEC player, Adam Walton. Tennessee will face Alabama A&M after the Hornets completed a magical run in 2021 by winning their first SWAC title this year. Congrats on punching your ticket, gentlemen. Two more at-large berths have been scooped up by Memphis and Georgia Tech to round out this quartet in Knoxville. Moving on down, Arizona earns its second consecutive trip to the NCAA tournament as an at-large bid to battle Michigan. And it's three in a row for Cleveland State after capturing a three-peat at the Horizon League tournament over the weekend. And they'll have a date with 14th seed and site host Kentucky. The Wildcats went a perfect 15-0 at home this year and were led by the number one singles player in the country, Liam Draxel, who also earned SEC Newcomer of the Year. That should be a fun one down in Lexington. Staying in the Southeastern Conference, the 11th seed has been awarded to Georgia, who earned marquee wins over NC State, Texas A&M, and UCF this season. They also have three players ranked in the top 30 for singles, along with the fifth-ranked doubles team in the nation and Georgia will face three-peat SOCON champ ETSU. Meanwhile the other pairing in this quartet Virginia Tech can breathe a sigh of relief after falling in the ACC quarterfinals. The Hokies will square up with another at-large team in Texas Tech. On to the next pod and we start with Oklahoma State sneaking in from the Big 12 after uh, doing so under interim head coach Scoville Jenkins. And it'll be another Navy ship midshipman sighting taking on the Cowboys after claiming back-to-back -back Patriot League titles this year. Welcome back Presbyterian back in the tournament 
led by Big South Player of the Year Max Benson. The Blue Hose match up with six-seeded and storied program North Carolina. The Tar Heels return to the dance after a trip to the national semifinals in 2019. And this year, the Heels placed four on the All-ACC team, including four-time ACC first-teamer and four-time All-American William Bloomberg. UNC finished the season 19-3 and, and will host this first and second round pod. One quarter of the bracket to go, and it begins with seventh-seeded TCU. The Horned Frogs made an early exit in the Big 12 Tournament semifinal after winning the regular season crown for the fourth time in five years. So you know TCU is itching to get back on the court, and they'll do so facing Arkansas, an at-large bid from the SEC. Meanwhile, for the first time since 2016, Wichita State, you are in. Welcome back to the tournament. You've got a date with Arizona State. Moving on, it's Ohio State, back after they earned the top overall seed in 2019. And the Buckeyes will play Atlantic 10 champion VCU in the first round. Mid-Eastern Conference champion South Carolina State will join the ladies program for another trip to the NCAA tournament after winning the program's 13th MEAC championship in the last 16 seasons. Rounding out this quartet and hosting will be 10th seeded Wake Forest, led by ACC Freshman of the Year Henry Esquire, who went 15 and six at the number one singles position this season. And overall, the Demon Deacons had four players earning all ACC honors after an impressive 11 and one record in ACC play. Eight teams to go. And we begin with 15th seed Ole Miss. Finn Reynolds leads the charge for the Rebels, who tied Texas A&M for the second most players on the all ace on the all SEC list, rather with four. He was ranked 14th in the country in singles and number one in doubles, teaming up with Tim Sandcallin for the best pairing in the country. They'll take on Belmont, the Ohio Valley King, in the first round. A four and a half hour drive down I-40 for Middle Tennessee State will have the Raiders ready for their first round meeting with Tulane who finished the regular season ranked 21st in the nation. All right, folks, running out of berths to hand out, four teams left and another one has been taken by Alabama. The Tide roll into their 20th tournament to battle after earning an at-large bid in 2019. They will serve it up against another at-large opponent from the Pac-12. This time, it's Oregon. Back in the dance to take on the Tide. Final two. It was a long wait for Southland champ Texas A&M Corpus Christi, but here they are. The Islanders are back for the 12th time, and they will travel to take on the two-seeded Baylor Bears. For the first time since 2005, Baylor is the number one team in the nation. After leading the NCAA with 29 wins this year, Baylor collected both the Big 12 regular season and tournament crowns, placed five players on the all-tournament team, including the tournament's most outstanding player in Adrian Boyton, who was number one in singles, who was the number one singles champion, rather, in the Big 12. So there you have it, all 64 teams who are still alive in pursuit of a national title. Now that everybody knows where they're headed, the travel will be quick. The first and second rounds taking place this weekend. The winner of each side advances to the USTA National Campus in Orlando, Florida, where each will compete for the national championship contested between May 17th and May 28th. The event will be hosted by the University of Central Florida and the Greater Orlando Sports Commission. Thank you to them for putting on this wonderful event. The team quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals will air this year live on the Tennis Channel. And of course, make sure you keep up with the rest of live stream scores and updates right here on NCAA.com. Congrats and best of luck to all the student athletes competing in this year's championship. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And so long, I'm Matt Schumacher.
If a champion can teach us anything, it's to stay hungry, to keep our resolve, and to prepare for what's next. So to the players in the college sports community who never stop believing, the end goal is in sight, the ultimate rally, a comeback for all ages, for the fans, the teams, and most importantly, the players. Let's bring on the next champion. We're ready.